I wanted to let you know that uh, there was actually a mistake in the bulletin. Uh, the, the topic title of my talk today is Haystacks. And we're going to start at the bottom with the Fritos, which is going to be Genesis. And we're going to go through the whole haystack until we get to the top, which is sour cream and cheese, and that's going to be Revelations. Totally joking. You, you got to know that about me first. Uh, I, as my wife says, I joke to my son quite a bit, and he doesn't know the difference between the joke and what is real, and she'll tell him to say, ha ha, daddy. So, ha ha, that's not the, to the topic of my talk today. Uh, what it is, is it's about water. I'm going to take a moment, and I'm going to, uh, those who don't know me, my name is Sal. Uh, I went to PUC. How many people went to PUC? Right? On Granger Hall, 95 through 98. Uh, I actually hit the West Coast three, went to PUC, La Sierra, and Walla Walla. I ended up at La Sierra. I went to Walla Walla in between because I was looking for a wife, because uh, they used to call that uh, Western Wedding College. <clears throat> it never happened. The, the quarter that I was there, it was too cold. I said, I have to get back to California to where it's warmer. Uh, eventually, I met my wife at the Hollywood Church. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come to church and find a wife. Uh, I am an actor. Um, that is what I do. It's not a thing. It's, it's something that I've chosen to do for my life, and I'm, I'm very proud of it. So uh, I work off script, and when I, when I don't have a script, it makes me nervous. So I have a script today, and I'm going to read off my script. My improv skills still need some fine-tuning. So... Uh, we all have a bottle of water, so the topic of the, the talk is water. What about water? Most of our body is made up of water, 60%. Now, if you're a doctor and these are off, you can tell me afterwards, because Google, this is what comes up on Google. <laughs> the brain and the heart are composed of 73% water. The lungs are about 83%. Hold on to that thought and that idea that our survival is dependent on water. Living in Southern California, we know a thing or two about the value of water. Every summer we go through a water crisis. We use too much water and then we have water restrictions. And those of us who love our green lawn, takes to, take, we, we take to watering our lawn in the middle of the night when nobody is, uh, is looking and we wake up and we have nice green lawns and say it's a miracle. Then some places, in the, some places in the world where water is abundant. Uh, a couple of years ago, my father and I took a trip, um, and we drove through Switzerland. I don't know if any of you have been in the northern part of Italy or Switzerland. The most amazing bodies of water, lakes, the water just comes off the mountains and from the Alps, uh, and waterfalls, like, you just wouldn't believe and it, it's so amazing to see uh, the abundance of water. Let's pause for a moment and think about water globally. We can sit here in Santa Clarita seasonally and go through a water shortage where we might have to let our lawns go brown and have shorter showers. In other places in the world, people are lucky enough to have access to clean water to drink. When you have a chance, look up online on YouTube. The founder of Charity Water has a very amazing story about what water did in his life and what he's doing with water around the world. Now, just a, a couple little side jokes. I don't, I don't know if you have seen it kind of go through online or social media. There's an interesting... Uh, there's a, a picture of a, a little boy in an, uh, a village in Africa, and he's looking up at this woman, and he says, you mean to tell me you have so much clean water that you go to the bathroom in it? It's kind of, kind of a funny thing to think about people around the world who don't have access to clean water. Images of water pervade the gospel stories, symbolizing chaos, rebirth, and new life. 
Jesus was baptized in water. He walked on water. He turned water into wine. These and other narratives are grounded in the stories and the experience of the ancient Israelites who used ideas about water to better understand God. To consider the relationship with water, to consider Jesus' relationship with water, we must first consider water and the scriptures. And the message, God gives birth to creation by bringing shape and order to watery chaos. This is important in pointing out in the story of the ancient Israelites, water held a diverse meaning from creation to the source of life, to places of danger, to a means of cleansing and renewal. The creation story, in the creation story, God created space between the waters where the earth could flourish. In Genesis 2, and God began with a barren land and used water as a source of life and renewal for rest and creation. And both incidences were separating the water from land or by turning the chaos of water to a source of vitality. God demonstrates his divine authority. We see with Jesus, we see with Jesus' humanity and his immersion in the water of baptism. We also see his div- divinity as he shows that he can control the water. Jesus's, Jesus quieted a chaotic storm. He walked on water and he turned water into wine. That's another, another kind of funny thing. There's a picture that has gone around social media. We all shop at Trader Joe's. At some point, somebody thought it might be funny to take the water sign and put it over where the wine is, where you have all the bottles of wine, and then put, Jesus was here. Jesus said, if you are thirsty, come to me and drink. Have faith in me, and you will have living water flowing deep from inside you. I want to take a moment and take a snippet of the verse for today and focus on that. And there are a lot of object lessons that can be taken from this one story, this idea of water. Without getting into deep theological discussions, They make me nervous. Let's look at this for a moment with Jesus, this encounter that the woman has with Jesus. We know of the cultural prejudices between the Samaritans and the Jews. We know that this woman was a social outcast, having had five husbands, and the time of the day that she goes to the well as not to cross people on the path. Yet Jesus is there. Can you imagine that? Knowing that You are that person publicly with all the weight on your back of the burdens of your mistake and shame and sin. Jesus makes the first move, and he asks her for a drink of water. A woman, and this is from the Message Bible, by the way, and I just want to say... Going through these verses today, I kind of looked at a couple different versions, but I really liked the, the way that the message gave this. A woman, a Samaritan woman, came to draw water. Jesus said, would you give me a drink of water? Talk about breaking the ice. Verse 9 and 10. The Samaritan woman, taken back, asked, how come you, a Jew are asking me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink. Jews in those days would not be caught talking dead to Samaritans. And Jesus answers, if you knew the generosity of God and who I am, if you knew the generosity of God and who I am, key line, you would be asking me for a drink and I would give you fresh, living water. Jesus was offering this woman water for her thirsty soul, despite all the other social and cultural reasons that he should not be conversing with her. He gives it, he offers it to her. Not only that, he says, anyone who drinks this water from the well will get thirsty. 
But anyone who drinks the water that I will give them will never thirst again. And the message says it this way, the water I give will be an artisan water, an artisan spring from within, gushing with fountains of endless life. Wow, wow. don't you love that word artisan water? We go to the store and we're bombarded with all these different brands of water and kind of water on, on the shelf. And you kind of, sometimes you'll go for the expensive one and will say artisan because you think that might be the best water you're getting. I love how the Message Bible use those, uses those words, gushing fountains of endless life. I want that water, do you? Why would we think of depriving our bodies of water when they thirst? Why then would we deprive our souls of life and the water of Christ? Why don't we come to the well and ask for the water? Why don't we let ourselves, why do we let our, ourselves get thirsty and dry? Why do we deprive our souls, our bodies of the living water? At what point do we come to the well? to see Jesus. I want to do this thing um, that we learn in acting school. And I want you to just bear with me. I know it's, it may be different for you. But I want you to go on a journey with me. Um, you all have a bottle of water with you, right? Please tell me you haven't opened it. It's closed. I know. I see the clock. I'm working. But I, I want you to take for a moment and, and go on a journey with me. And we do this thing in, in acting school called sensory exercise. And it's to help heighten your, your, your senses that when you're working on a script, you can recall things a little bit better. So I want you to close your eyes with me. Everybody close your eyes. You've got to participate. And we're going to go on a journey we're going to go for a walk on a hike, Sabbath afternoon. And we're not going to take much with us except a, a small bottle of water. And, and it's a hot day. But you started this journey and you said that you could do it. So you're going to do it. You're going to give yourself a couple of hours. You're going to enjoy the day. And you're going to go on the hike. And you, you somewhat know this trail and you start off on the journey it's really hot. And you, you feel your fingers. And take out your fingers and kind of shake them, feel them. All the, way, all the way to the tips of your nails and your feet. And you're ready to go. And, and you start walking. And you're walking. You're thinking about your week. And then you've gone for about an hour, and you feel that heat. So you reach for your water, and you take a big gulp. It's not a small gulp, you know, but a really big gulp that fills you. And you feel nice and wet. You put your, your bottle away, and you keep going forward. And you keep going. And the sun is really hot. It's one of those Santa Clarita August afternoons that reaches 103. Right? And you know what that is. And you wish that you were by a pool or something. And you think, wow, this was a bad idea. Why did I decide to go for a hike on a hot day? And you're kind of tired. You've been going for a while. And now your hands and your feet hurt. You know, that lower part in your back that starts to hurt when you've been walking for a long time. But now you feel the dryness in your throat. It's very scratchy. And the only way that will fix that is by having another drink of water. So you go and you grab your water and you realize that you have one more sip left. But it's one of those scratches in your throat that you can't breathe anymore. 
so I'll just fill up on the water now so I can breathe and continue with my hike. And you drink that last gulp of water. And you keep moving on. I want you to think of that, of just be in that place right now. And like the song that we had sang earlier, are you hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Christ. Leave your regrets and your mistakes. Come today. There is no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. And as the sun goes down, you're completely exhausted from this hike. You're drained and you have no more water. You don't know where you are on the trail. You thought you knew your direction. And you think, well, if I could just get around this corner, if I could just make it around this corner, maybe I might know where I am. I shouldn't have done this alone. I shouldn't have left without a map. And you turn the corner and imagine this. Jesus is standing there. And he's got about four big bottles of water. And he says, are you thirsty? Come and drink some water that I have for you. Now open your eyes and take that water and have a drink. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the water. Thank you so much that we can drop all of our cares, our sins, our burdens, and our shame. Exhausted as it may be, to think that we could do it ourselves. And you give us water. And it's not just to quench that thirst, it's everything. That water is everything. It fills us, it, it engulfs us, it cools us down, and it sustains us, Lord. So, Lord, we, we pray this Sabbath morning that you uh, fill us with water, that we come to your well, and we ask for it. Thank you for your love. In your name we pray. Amen.